Brandon Nimmo doesn't get get the pub probably that he should. Yeah, this guy's a pretty good player, man. And at times during the season, he's he's put the Mets on his back. It's been a few games. He's I feel like he's won by himself. And I'm in love. Boom never goes over well. It's not a, not a, it's a, it's a safe word around here. It's not a safe word. No, yeah, you don't want to be saying that too loud over there. As we, as we established, hey, last night you went to the, uh, you went to the Shark Tank in there, uh, in Mandalay, didn't you? I told you it was yeah. not pretty legit for being in a casino. Dude, everything in Vegas is like next level. Yeah, it was incredible. I was like, the only reason I went because you, you told me to go and you told me Jess got attacked by the sharks. So. Um, yeah, we Sarah and I went. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And the one, did you see the one fish, the swordfish thing? Oh yeah, it looked like, it looked like a freaking samurai sword on the front end of the of the fish. So yeah, they don't uh, it was cool, cool, man. It was cool. Vegas was cool. It was a great trip. Uh, Jilly staying one more day with her mom. They're they're letting, they're leaving. They're leaving tomorrow. So nice. Sarah and I are flying back today and back home. But Vegas, dude, it, it's what an interesting place Vegas is. It's so weird. We had a six o'clock flight this morning mm-hmm. and we were coming down to like four, you know, four fifteen. And you're in the you're coming out of the you know elevators and you're like the lighting in that place makes it feel like it's daylight. So it's like, what time is it? You know, and that, that, that's how they get you, you know, that's how they get you. Oh, absolutely. Dude, really, and do one other thing that I, I, I told you that I, when I was sitting at the and Willie McGinnis walked in and Miguel Cabrera was my right. Dude, another buddy of mine. My roommate in with the with the Reds in 1998 was a guy named Mike Frank. Yeah, great dude. Great, I believe he went to Santa Barbara. If I'm thinking, thinking right, one of the funniest guys ever, dude. Dude, he. I mean, talk about talk about not having great nutrition. We used to. Hmm. There was a, a place a uh, place called United Dairy Farmers, which our owner of the Reds, Carl Linder, owned. Mike Frank and I used to get a gallon of peanut butter chip ice cream after every game and make milkshakes. <laughs> in, our, in, our, in our apartment but dude the other day he, he texted me yesterday after we got off he's like hey rumor has it that you're here in vegas i go and i was like are you here in vegas he's like yeah his daughter he lives in sacramento so his daughter was playing on a on a um team too and and so was i so me and him met, went, met i do i go meet i go meet me in the lobby right now oh so my I go downstairs, God. Meet my, i haven't seen him in 17 years dude Somebody needs to do a feature on this tournament that you were at because every like professional athlete's daughter has been playing in this tournament th- this week. It, it was incredible. It was it was incredible. There was so many people there, but it was uh, but hanging out with Mike Frank dude for like an I hung out with him for like an hour. We played a little bit of blackjack, but we got a chance to really catch up. So it was uh, That's it great. was really cool, man. It was really cool. Very cool. Very cool. Um, we got a lot going on in Major League Baseball right now. Case, uh, let's see where can we start. Why don't we start with the rosters completed for the home run derby this year, which is very okay. exciting. Okay. I'm going to rip through the guys, maybe pop in with uh, some thoughts on each. Obviously, the one major change this year is they've kind of tweaked the rules a little bit so guys won't get as tired. Like, Pete Alonso got tired last year. Couldn't win. Like, you only get so many pitches, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you're not really, like, rate. You're not, like, it's not as much of a sprint but you got to have more impact. You have to hit the ball. When you hit them, they got to go out. I think that's kind of how that's, it's going to play, but it, it's, it's a good move. I think because guys, you know, you, you hate when that, that last round, you're so excited. It amps up. And then somebody wins with like eight homers because they're just, yeah. Gay. Yeah. So I think they've alleviated that as they, they've been doing great with this. Isn't, isn't there something too with like, you have to hit a ball 440 feet to get a bonus ball or something. Yeah, I mean it's a head. It's it's not the head to head bracket like it was, uh, in in uh in that first round. Top four first round scores will advance to the semifinal bracket, and the hitters will see a maximum of forty pitches in each timed round. That's what I'm talking about. Placing more emphasis on efficiency as opposed to speed, right? Okay. 
Yeah, I like that. All right, so we got uh, Gunnar Henderson, 24 and, bombs. And, and wait, wait, the other thing is, too, it's not head-to-head, -head, right, until Correct. the last four guys. Exactly, yes. So that that also eliminates a problem of a guy who hits 17 in a first round, but he loses to a guy who had 18, and then right. the guy was six. It's it's all It all makes sense. They do a good job, man. Chris Mariner yeah. decided to organize that stuff at the league. Um so we got Gunnar Henderson, 27 home runs at the moment. His longest home run so far, 430 feet. It's very cool, sophomore, to be in this game. In this yeah, it's so, right? cool. it's so cool. Yeah. Alec Bohm, who we've talked about, can hit doubles with the best of them. He's only got 11 bombs, but he's humongous. He hits the ball 427 feet. It's his biggest so far. Pete Alonzo is back. 18 bombs, 446 feet is his furthest. I feel like if P. Alonzo is not in this, I mean, he has to be in it. It's like, it's like I don't feel like I feel like right now in this generation, it's Pete Alonzo is a bet. Yeah, I, I agree. It's his. It's his. Whether he wins the year before or not, he's the guy to be in this. Yeah. Now, I agree. here comes some more pop, dude. Some more young pop. Bobby Witt Jr. He's got 15 bombs. He's hit a ball 468 feet so far. Dude, he could crush. I can't wait to do it. He, he he might be the guy that I'm most excited to see in this derby. Yeah, that's good. Michelle, uh, Marcelo Zuna, who's having probably the year of his life, 23 bombs, 446 is his furthest. I like Jose Ramirez, 23 bombs. He's hit a ball 436 feet so far. I think this kind of setup, it helps him a little bit more because he can just lock in on hitting those line drive home runs, doesn't have to worry about hitting pops. He actually was in it in 2022 and did pretty well. You don't look at yeah. him physically like He's the got big. Consos, He's got big pop, dude. Ramirez got, has got big pop, so yeah. It's good now, pop. now these next two guys, I love these two guys are what like the home run derby is made for. Garcia of the Rangers and Teoscar of the Dodgers. Uh, Garcia's got seventeen. He's hit a ball four hundred twenty-eight feet so far this year. Uh, Teoscar's got nineteen, and he he's hit a ball four hundred thirty-one. But those two guys, those are the kind of like BP guys you like seeing in this thing. Like, it's going to be high. They're going to be far, not yeah. the line drive guys. I'm surprised those guys haven't hit balls further. Sometimes I think that stat cast, you watch some of these balls land, you're like, no way is that 430. It looks like 480. You know? I agree. I 100% agree. Um, so we say it's Alonzo's to lose every year, I would say. But if you have another guy, if you were going to pick somebody. Bobby, Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt Jr., bro. Bobby you like Witt. Witt. That, that's the guy I'm picking this year. I yeah. just, dude, he's got, Bobby Witt's got big time pop. I mean, I, I, I think because he plays at Kansas City, we don't all know about him. But, man, you've got to watch this guy play. This guy is something special, man. He really right. is something special. So, what did he have, 30 bombs last year and 49 stolen bases? And he got yeah. thrown out. He got thrown out on the uh, on the last last day of the year. Austin Wells but got him the <laughs> yeah. second day he went. But, you know, it. I, I just, I just, this guy is is impressive, and I think, it, and I love his smile. I, I love his, I love his um, passion for baseball. It's contagious. Obviously, his dad, Bobby Witt Senior, played all those years. Um, who's they're just a great family. I, I got a chance to coach him in the Under Armour All American game years ago, and I was just so impressed with the human being, and just to watch what he's doing, how good of a player he is at the All Star game. Uh, you know, it, it's just so fun to watch. So I'm, mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm picking Bobby Wood Jr. in the Derby, man. I'm just excited to watch it. I'm excited to crush some balls, Chinch. Yeah, dude. You know, it'd be really fun. Bobby Wood Jr. Gunner Henderson final, like, yeah. Because those guys are going to be battling for the best in the bigs for years to come. It's like it's almost like you know, like uh, when it was Magic and Bird. Those two guys are that kind of elite player. So that that'll be fun. That's it's a good year. It's a good 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 group this year. You don't have any. Yeah, okay. It's a great group. Dude, I don't know the answer to this, but I, I want to. I'd be interested to see Jose Ramirez because he's a switch hitter. Mm. What his what his best side is power wise? Because dude, Lance Berkman. I remember when I was in the 04 All Star game, Lance Berkman put on a show, obviously for the crowd in Houston. But Berkey obviously takes most of his swings lefty. He's one of the best hitters lefty, but he said he had more power righty, so he did the derby righty. That's so I always thought it was. I always thought that was interesting. Yeah. You know what's funny about that legend? He Jose Ramirez. One of the most legendary things about him is that his splits, righty lefty, are 
about as similar as they could possibly be for a switch hitter over the course of his career. How about this? What if he alternates? What if yeah. he, what if he gets through the first round and he's, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling it as much. Do you switch back to the other side of the plate? I mean, you do it in BP every day, probably, right? Well, dude, yeah. And, and what an advantage, too, because you're using different parts of your body. You're not getting as gassed. So I mean, it, it would be an advantage to Jose Ramirez if he decides, you know what, I'm going righty, going lefty. Would he have to get a different BP pitcher, though? Would he want to bring in the lefty BP pitcher when right. he's getting righty at the righty? You know? And they can't, they can't possibly have a rule right now to say he can't. He could switch every pitch <laughs> if he really wanted to. Sure, I'm sure well, he could. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get between the lines, dude, because uh, I was listening to D-Row this morning on uh, Central 2. We were talk they were talking about this, but the, the um, uh, National League Central is the most dynamic, crazy thing going on right now. The Reds and the Cubs are both 44 and 49, identical, uh, identical there, both three and a half games out of the wild card, and in case the Pirates are just a half game ahead of them. So... They were kind of talking about like contending versus pretending of these teams, but like between the Pirates, the Cubs, and the Reds, and the trade deadline minute, you know, twenty days away tops. Uh, what is our take on these teams, and what are you doing if you're the GM of either of any of? I mean, you're in a pickle a little bit. I mean, because well. Listen, I, I look at the Reds and the Pirates a little different because they're smaller market teams. You obviously have to. You know, you're you're leaning into your young players. You know, you're leaning into O'Neill Cruz, Dela Cruz. You're ne leaning into Skeens and Hunter Green, and you know all these young guys that you have on your team. So you're hoping you know you can fill in any piece that you need to take you to another level. Um, so I think out of that group, with those records, the Cubs are the one that I think they have to make the most decisions because. Uh, I think they're the they're the team that has the money to to do whatever they want to do, really. And if you're sitting at 44 and 49, is that what they're at? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to think: Do you trade Bellinger? You know, what I mean, are you are you, is there any guys in the, on those teams that you're moving to maybe look forward to next year, or are you do you think you have a good enough club, which I think they do, to make a run? I mean, this is the problem. This is the thing we talked about baseball. It's 162. There's so much season left, dude. Yeah, there's 70 games to go. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest thing is like, you know, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to get back? You know, are you willing to unload Bellinger's deal? Because he's just having a pretty good year. Is he worth, what is it, three years, 80 million? Is he worth 30 some million a year? Are, are you going to get stuck with him for two more years? Is he, if he doesn't give you the uh, production he gave you last year? So I don't know. There's just some interesting questions you got to ask if you're the Cubs, if you want to. You know, do you want to sell or, or do you want to do you want to do you want to keep it going? I think the Pirates just obviously I think the Pirates can make a run with that pitching. Um, I think they need a couple more bats in that lineup. Mm. So I think that's a that's a big thing that Ben Charrington and those guys are going to have to look at. Um, and I think the Reds, too. You know, I think the Reds, you know, they, they get right to 500, then they lose some games. So, yeah, I think with De La Cruz and that rotation of you know, Green and Abbott and, and, and Montas and the guys that they have, uh, I think they're better than they they're better than they've played too. So yeah. I think the Reds and the Reds and the Buccos stay put. The Cubs have to ask themselves, do they unload some contracts? I like that point because Cubs really are World Series a bus type team. Right. The Reds and the Reds both have guys at the top of their rotations that could sneak you down and scare the crap out of you in a in a short series. Hunter Green, boom. Uh Pirates, we know who they have. I see you looking over. Right. You got to get on. Oh your yeah, no, I just see, I'm just seeing if we're boarding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Yeah. We're not boarding. No, we're not boarding yet. We're not boarding. We got time. Okay, good. Because I got another guy I want to talk to you about. Who, interestingly enough, is having the best season of his career, and he's had a pretty great career statistically, even though he's not one of the guys that's on most people's radars. And that's Brandon Nimmo of the New York Metropolitans. Dude, he's snubbed. He should be an All Star this year. 16 bombs. Biggest thing about him, what they've been saying, is that through the years, his metrics have been amazing. They've been great. Hard hit rate. He's up there towards the top. Wins above replacement here and there. His defense is great. All this kind of stuff. But he was a hitting too many ground balls, Sean. And I know over the last 
however many years, everybody's like, hit the ball in the air, hit the ball in the air. He's one guy who now has become a little bit more elite because of the power he has. 16 bobs, got a homer in three straight games. Lefties, righties, doesn't matter. What's your take on how he's doing? And how do you teach a guy to hit the ball in the air without overdoing it? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, too, you know, I, also, I, dude, I think of Judgy. I mean, Judgy talks about when he first got to the big leagues, he was so steep and he was getting frustrated. He hit these 115 mile an hour grounders, you know, and then, you know, then he started to really, you know, work back and, you know, through the ball and get the ball in the air. He was like, I just don't want to hit those grounders all the time. So that's where the game's at, too, Chinch. I mean, get the ball in the air, hit the ball at the ballpark. That's how you win ball games. That's how you get paid. So, yeah, it looks like Brandon Nimmo is just, you know, his his bat path, bat path looks a little flatter. It looks like it's maybe not so steep. And he's starting to get the ball in the air, especially the left center. I mean, he's driving the ball all over the ballpark, but really going, you know, into those gaps, left center, right yeah. center. So, I mean, uh, yeah, you've got to give – Brandon Nimmo doesn't get the, get the pub probably that he should. Yeah. This guy's a pretty good player, man. And at times during the season, he's he's put the Mets on his back. And there's been a few games he's – I feel like he's won by himself. Yeah, there was one. He, he was facing Imanaga uh, about a week ago. Fastball dotted, first pitch outside corner, and he crushed it over the ivy the other way. Wow. And it's just kind of like this guy's yeah. thin. So hopefully he can sneak into Dude, the you – know, You know what's crazy, too? I saw something, too, you know, speaking of the match. It's like uh, as soon as Jose Iglesias came up, what Dude. Are they, like 20 and 18 or something, 19 yeah. and 9 or whatever it is, so, it's so ridiculous. He's over, I think he's hitting over 500 with runners in scoring position since he became a Met. It's like the greatest start to a, a, a career with the Mets ever. <laughs> and he's got his song going. That, that dude is riding high right now. That's he's right. Great. Yeah. Dude, it just goes to show you what Bojo can do. One guy coming in with some flair, some, yeah. you know, little little moxie can change things up, get things, get, get things going. There you go. There you go. All right. You got to get going, man. You got to get you on that plane. No, I got one more guy I want to talk about. Oh, that's uh, right. Go ahead. One, one more guy from the Twins, man. And, and, you know, the Twins are getting loaded, dude. I mean, you know, Royce Lewis obviously is banged up a little bit again, but hopefully he gets back soon. But a guy that they drafted in the first round who I really, really liked when, when the draft was happening, was when, it was the eighth pick overall in 2020 to draft, Rooks Lee. Dude, this guy can break. And I thought it was great the other day. I don't know if you saw yesterday. He went deep on Drew Thorpe with the White Sox. And I guess they were roommates at Cal Poly together in, in, in college. So it was kind of like, a, you know, they're, they're best of buddies. But watch this kid, man. This kid flat out ranks. I thought he was going to break camp with them at spring training. He had a great spring. He was hitting really well. Thought he was going to break camp, but but he didn't. Uh, but he's here now. And, then, dude, he, he's here to stay, too. So they – uh. Uh, dude, the Twins have some good young players, man. They really do. They, they really, really do. So it's it's a fun team. You you watch you watch the Twins. You know, box scores on the Twins. They bang. They do bang. Brooks Lee is another big prospect for them. Yeah. That, you know, and, and give the Twins credit. They, you know, they're 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 drafting these hitters and they're nailing them. So that's not easy to do either. Just because you got first round picks doesn't mean you got good players. Yeah, his career minor league stats in small sample size, 746 at bats, 292 average, 27 bombs and 125 RBIs, nine bags. Not bad. Yeah, yeah he can hit, dude. This kid can hit, man. Brooks Lee. All right. Overall pick number eight of the Twins in 2022. Casey always is on these guys, fans. He's yeah, always yeah, yeah. on them. <laughs> and they're all starting to come and play now. So we like it. All right, good. Glad I like this guy. I told, I told one of my buddies this year, he was like, Bro, who do I pick up? Who do I pick up? You know, I needed some guy. I said, pick up Brooks Lee. And then, you know, he's kind of on me like, dude, where's Brooks Lee? I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, he's coming. You know, I, I didn't know it was going to be July, but I knew he was coming fast. So there you go. He's right nice. there. Beautiful. All right, man. All right, all right Kitchy. Hey, man, thanks for uh, everybody out there listening. I'm, I'm about to board this flight and get out of here. And uh, what do you got the rest of the day, brother? Anything? I obviously have to charge my uh, batteries here because one died and the other one's juiced me up. Right went now. Off. I saw it went off. Oh, he's in the dark. Yeah, now I'm all bright. Uh, doing that and then just uh, working, man. That's about it. Hanging in there. Okay, brother. All right, man. Have a great rest of the day, brother. Love you. Everyone out there, thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. See you. Later. Let's go.